Third time's the charm. We're doing the final New York Jets mock draft of the offseason. Inside, and a beauty. Hall running free. Brees Hall inside the 10. He's going to score. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Talking Jets with Tigo. My name is Tigo, and today we're going to be doing a mock draft we're going to be looking at uh and trying to predict accurately what the new york jets are going to do in this upcoming draft for those of you who don't know this is my third attempt at recording this i originally had done this last night put a ton of effort into researching a bunch of players joe douglas and what he does traditionally all of those different things recorded it edited it did everything to make this as pretty as possible for you guys and then i woke up this morning was taking care of the baby boom tweet comes in the new york jets have re-signed connor mcgovern well that kind of ruined my draft because i took a center really really high in this draft uh, in that version of that mock draft and then i was just like okay like okay we're gonna redo this so i redo the tr the, the draft Remock it, included an Aaron Rodgers trade in it, did all of those things. And then the Aaron Rodgers nudes breaks, and now I've got to redo the draft now with the new New York Jets trade and Aaron Rodgers, and now we're picking at 15, and we don't have 42, we have 43, and we don't have 204, we have, you know, 170. A bunch of different things changed, but this is my fully predictive New York Jets mock draft. The idea here is, like I said before, I have looked at every piece of information that I could find about the New York Jets, every bit of content, every bit of information news about who they've met with, what type of players they've drafted historically when you look at Joe Douglas, what kind of players Robert Sala likes in his system, the whole nine. I've tried to do everything in my power to make sure that I've cultivated a accurate mock draft for what's going to happen Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. So without any further ado, so that I don't have to spend a bunch of time editing, I'm just going to show you the whole draft and talk out all of my bits and pieces. And boom, this is the new York Jets mock draft that I think ultimately would really end up being what we see on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So we start the draft with the number 15 overall pick. And lucky for us, um, the New England Patriots chose in front of us to take Darnell Wright instead of Broderick Jones. And the New York Jets still get their guy. The New York Jets uh, absolutely... Um, go out and upgrade the tackle position. Trading for Aaron Rodgers, none of that changes the fact that the New York Jets still need to solidify that offensive tackle room. I have Broderick Jones as my number one tackle in this class, specifically for the New York Jets. And Darnell Wright, when you look at the guys that the New York Jets are interested in, is a close second. I do like Paris Johnson. I do like Peter Skaronsky. But all three, all four of those guys were gone by the time the New York Jets picked at 15. So uh, I took, or I'm sorry, all three of those guys were gone. So I took Broderick Jones as the fourth tackle in the first round and was happy about it. Then the New York Jets get to pick 43, and the uh, I decided that, you know what? There was a couple of players that I was targeting at 43. All three of them were still there. I felt comfortable with the teams behind us dropping back, you know, 15 spots to 58 and recouping a third round pick in this year's draft and a fourth round pick in this year's draft as well, getting as many assets as possible um, while moving back and still getting a guy that I would have taken at 43 anyway, and that's Dion Henley, the linebacker out of Washington. When we look at the, you know, the tools that he has and what he can bring. I think day one, he can really start competing with and even pushing for a starting job with Quincy Williams. And when we do, and it's very rarely run in a, out of our base four three defense with three linebackers, Dion Henley is an immediate upgrade and really solidifies the long term of the linebacker room. I'm a big fan of Jamie and Sherwood and adding Dion Henley. What we've essentially done is gotten our middle linebacker and will linebacker of the future. You know, we got the mic, we got the will, 
um, for the future, and we don't really have to worry about that position. So now the New York Jets go into round three with the new pick that we got from the Dallas Cowboys. And we got pick 90 from the Cowboys, and we use that pick on an interior defensive lineman, Kobe Turner out of Wake Forest. Now, when you look at Kobe Turner and the things that he provides um, in the sense of what his measurables are as an interior defensive lineman, he matches up exactly with what the New York Jets and specifically with what Robert Sala likes from his interior defensive lineman. When you look at his measurables, he measures out height and weight almost identical to what Sheldon Rankins does. He's a three technique. You line him up over the guard and what he provides in pass rushing sets is absolutely phenomenal. Where is he going to struggle at the NFL level in the run game? That's why he's probably going to be the weak side interior defensive line rusher because we know Quinnen can pass rush and run stop at the same time, but if in pure passing situations, Kobe Turner can really provide a difference uh, in that pass rushing skill set and what he can do, um, and it fits the mold of what the New York Jets want to do on the interior of the defensive line um, when you look at all of his measurables and statistics and specifically what he did at Wake Forest. Now, the problem with him is that he is an older pass rusher. I believe he did four years at a different university before transferring to... Uh, to Wake Forest, but uh, the upgrade and competition didn't affect his game at all. If anything, he got better when he got to the ACC, so that's fantastic. Now, the New York Jets continue into the fourth round with our pick, 112, and we're going to take a player that we've met with at a position that we absolutely need, and we got Dwayne McBride, the running back out of UAB. The New York Jets are in a position where we need to be able to stack up our rooms as much as possible with as much talent as possible and keep this rotation of, you know, high level talent in these rooms that currently have some injury concerns with it. Brees Hall, as far as I'm concerned, is still hurt. You know, Michael Carter has missed time in both of the last two years. Uh, Bam Knight fell off at the end of the year last year. It's hard for me to say that I feel 100% confident that we're going to have a fully healthy running back room anytime soon. So keeping on track, fourth round running back can come in and I love his skill set. And don't forget that the New York Jets have actually met with Dwayne McBride. We've brought him in for a visit. I believe we used the top 30 visit on him. I'm checking on that right now. I had I don't know why I closed this. Um but yeah, we used a top 30 visit on Dwayne McBride, a private visitation to the Florham to Florham Park to see what he can do. And so this makes a ton of sense. Now, the New York Jets, uh, when it comes to the safety position, I loved the value of Christopher Smith here at 129, the pick that we got from Dallas. I was originally not going to take a safety in this year's draft. We didn't have the capital for it, and I thought that there were other places that I would rather use that draft capital. But the value, and it's a pick that we didn't expect to have, at 129 was too good. Christopher Smith can, can immediately come in and be a net positive in that safety room. He can also play slot corner and back up Michael Carter II. He will see the field in year one, and it gives us the ability to get out from under Jordan Whitehead if you so choose. And if not, you can just keep Christopher Smith, keep the guys that we have in the locker room, and have a really, really good competition when it comes to camp time. Uh, and then in round five with pick 143, I know that uh, PFF gives this a, uh, an F grade, but I think PFF is a little bit lower on Ricky Stromberg, the center out of Arkansas, than other um uh, Places And this is where I see him getting picked on average when you do an aggregate of all of the teams and all of the drafting sites. And Ricky Stromberg is a guy, he's an older prospect, he has a ton of SEC reps at center, and when you bring him in to really compete and to sit behind Connor McGovern, Ricky Stromberg has the skill set, especially one year from now, to be the center that the New York Jets for the next seven to eight years years and then to round out the draft in round five with pick 170 the pick that we got from the Green Bay Packers we're gonna go out and get another edge rusher to add to the board and we're gonna get William Fahoko 
Now, why did I go with a guy like William Fajoko? Well, when you look at his skill set and what he provides and his measurables, he really, again, seems to be a guy that measures out with what the New York Jets like from their edge rusher position. He also has some positional versatility to bump inside if we want him to do that. But when you're looking at pure pass rushing and pure just over the tackle, outside of the tackle, go and get the pass rusher. He is, one, a relatively young prospect. He's not, actually. But, like... You tend to fall, you're either a young prospect at 21 or you're an old prospect at 24. He's right in the middle. He's at like 23 years old, but he has a really, really good pressure rate in college. And you hope that adding him into a New York Jets edge rusher room that has a ton of rotation right now. Remember, there we don't know if we're going to be keeping guys like Carl Lawson and uh, beyond this year, there's a lot of guys whose contracts can expire when you look at the edge rusher and the presence that the edge rushers uh, are going to provide. Uh, I would be surprised if the New York Jets go a single draft without taking an edge rusher, an offensive lineman, a running back, because these are the types of positions where the Jets are just going to rotate guys in and out because those are the positions that we work and function uh, by committee. Let me know what you guys think of this draft and we got Aaron Rodgers. I think this is really, really close. What grade would you give me? PFF gives me a B plus. I think the main thing is because they think I overdrafted Ricky Stromberg. They have him graded as like a sixth or a seventh round guy. I don't. I have him as a fourth or a fifth round guy, and I got him right where I wanted him. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this draft. And last but not least, go Jets.